So the witch wound is that part of yourself that is going to dim your light, dim your intuitive power, not talk about your gifts or your spiritual experiences because you're afraid of being rejected and being criticized for it. And so it can be having psychic abilities, but it can also be just singing. Whatever gifting you have, some people and you know, maybe you girls recognize yourself in that, that there's a small part of yourself that you think is too much or that is going to bother others. And so you're not expressing it. That's the witch wound. Welcome to another episode of Goddess Hangs. I'm Sadie. And I'm Juliet. Obviously. And we created Goddess Hangs to make the world of mindset, magic, and manifestation more relatable and, and fun. So much fun. So much fun. We have an incredible interview today. Um, gradually throughout this interview, Juliet and I float up into a cloud <laughs> and can barely speak because Ellie de Poisson, who is a divine feminine expert. She's a spiritual business mentor. Um, she's fucking magical. That's the only way I can describe her presence. Absolutely. We, I'm so excited for you all to listen. It's such a powerful message to receive right before the new year. I know Juliet and I have been talking about this for weeks now. And then to have this guest so special, um, 2022 is going to be the year of the divine feminine for us. Absolutely. And I love that it's two, 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 and mm -hmm. we're in a partnership, and it just feels, yeah, just feels good. So before we uh, turn over the interview to Magical Ellie, we wanted to remind you of some of our amazing sponsors. <laughs> bum, ba, da, bum. Bum, ba, da. Have you heard of the Goddess Hangs Patreon BFF group chat? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've heard some people talking about it, and it sounds interesting to me. Well, I heard it was actually one of the most welcoming, inclusive, supportive group of women in actually the universe. Honestly, I've been looking for a group of women, and it just, I don't know, I never feel like I belong or like people are going to be nice to me. Is this anything like that? Apparently. <laughs> well, apparently. <laughs> uh, I was like, I got a channel apparently kid right now. Well, apparently this is the most um, welcoming and apparently easygoing <laughs> group of women. And apparently. <laughs> <laughs> and apparently every time a new person joins, um, uh, apparently everyone just welcomes them and, and catches them up on everything they need to know, apparently. <laughs> Uh, and apparently everyone that joins just has the best time and feels so supportive and loved. And apparently... <laughs> so what is this, like 50 bucks a month? You would think. Honestly, it's a priceless investment, but for just $5 a month... A, a five? Apparently for $5 <laughs> a month, you can have 50 plus new goddess bff who knows by the time this episode comes out it might be 60 plus we don't know it keeps growing and growing it's absolutely it's... bananas but apparently for five dollars <laughs> a month you can be in this group chat and apparently for 22 dollars a month you can join the coven tier which we meet once a month on zoom it's mm -hmm. so so fun we do spells together we do guided meditations we have lots of fun ideas in store for the new year so apparently you should join today Absolutely. <laughs> I couldn't have said it better myself, young child, who just learned that word, the word apparently. and then was broadcast on the news. <laughs> I, I love when you they, all know who we're talking about. I love when we'll they link the video in the <laughs> when they interview <laughs> a child. What do you think about this? Like, it's well, apparently I've never <laughs> been on live TV before. <laughs> that was one of my favorite things ever. That one and the kid that was like, "I love turtles." Oh, I don't know that one. Oh my god, he's got zombie face makeup on. He's at a carnival where like kids can get like butterflies and like things, <laughs> but he has to get his whole face face painted like a a um a zombie. And the the newscaster's like, "What did you think about the carnival or something?" And he goes, "I like turtles." Oh, <laughs> we'll I find love it. That. We'll find it. Shout out to all the kids out there who have said cute shit on live TV. I know. Well, 
I will say one other great thing about the Patreon is it's not just you get access to this group of women you've never met in your life, because um, maybe that is Who like... Who immediately become your best yeah, friends. Her, it's not just that, but you get access to me and Sadie seven days a week. That's we're, true. We're almost... Apparently... <laughs> we're almost in it too much. <laughs> we're there all the time. And apparently we're just hanging out and we love reading and, and, and giving advice and chiming in. And mm -hmm. it's just so special because it's. I think it's really shifted. I don't know if it's apparent to the listeners, but I feel like it's shifted the energy for me and when we record the episodes because I have like an image of like the people we're talking yes. to like i see in my head yes like you know frenchie and mary and katie and rachel and annie and and taylor and you know all i'm, I'm sorry there's 50 of you and we can't say every <laughs> name aaron um i see all of your faces like there like like as we're recording i feel like it's shifted the energy for me a little bit in a good, really great way yeah and and zenya and ashley yes. and quincy Hannah. and Hannah J and Hannah not J and <laughs> Hannah A I think <laughs> it's just so wonderful it's so wonderful so um the new year January 1st is a great time to join mm -hmm, the mm -hmm. perfect day gift yourself the gift of friendship and magic yes and fun for 2022 it's definitely going to make the energy of 2022 just it's gonna raise your vibe because wow this group of women is just so supportive mm -hmm. and, and there for each other even on the days where i kind of am a little more quiet because i'm trying to be more intentional about days without my phone i come back and there's like hundreds of messages that i kind of skim through but everyone's just like supporting each other and advising mm -hmm. each other and giving the most a lot of the times when i'm like trying to chime in with advice i'm like honestly everyone already said what i was gonna say like <laughs> you guys are so amazing um so we can't recommend our our patreon enough it's so so fun so supportive and we also have our intuitive magic oracle deck goddess hangs presents intuitive magic oracle deck apparently <laughs> <laughs> the best deck on the market apparently apparently it's the only deck i use for my readings we did a really fun event um and mm -hmm. we used the deck exclusively yep. and we just had the best readings with the best time and it's a different energy to do readings with a deck you created it's pretty pretty crazy and it's a darn good deck it's a darn good deck <laughs> there's one card where we're like maybe we should have phrased that differently and the card is called happy, happy endings. endings and all the men were like oh i like they're this like card. honey did you hear that that's what's coming tonight wink wink but um yeah maybe we i won't. stand by it yeah let's let's keep happy it. endings for you happy endings for you i'm handing happy endings out like oprah <laughs> and you get a humpback whale <laughs> and you get a school i don't want to get a happy ending <laughs> so if you want a happy ending by intuitive magic oracle today Oh my gosh. Um, any other orders of business? Well, we have our jewelry line without Charmed um, that we will have. We'll have all of our offerings and all of Ellie's offerings linked in the show notes. But we have our beautiful necklaces, our, our charm bracelet, our charm ring. We also have really cute Goddess Hangs merch now. So make sure you check that out. Mm hmm. Maybe we'll wear our hats in an episode in oh, January. Oh, yes, absolutely. Um, and we are just so, so thrilled to present this interview where we slowly go speechless because it's so <laughs> fucking incredible. <laughs> go there with us. <laughs> and here we go. Here you go. We are so excited to have Eleanor de Passon with us today. Um, like we said, she is a expert at the Divine Feminine. She's a spiritual business mentor. And we're so excited to have this chat with you today leading into the new year because I feel like for both of us, Juliet and I, we really want to make um, an effort to be intentional about bringing more of the Divine Feminine into our businesses and our lives this year. Uh, so tell us a little bit about your story and like how you became an expert in the Divine Feminine and started your business. Thank you, Sadie. Thank you, Juliet, for having me on your podcast today. So that's great that you're both saying that you want to invite more of your divine feminine energy in for the new year, because when you look at the four season, we're in the winter right now. Mm -hmm. And the winter is the season of the feminine. Oh, okay. I never knew that. I didn't know that. 
Yeah, it's really the season uh, the season of slowing down, going mm. inward and regenerating yourself, but also being creative and really letting your ideas flow and then brew so that when you go in the spring, when it's going to be spring and actually the spring energetically starts on the 8th of February. Mm. And then you have more energy to actually birth these ideas. So now is the perfect timing to learn about the feminine and learn to embody it so that all your projects and ideas can be birthed and have success later on. Mm. So how I actually um, stepped into the divine feminine, it's a, it's a funny story. Well, like you girls, I was very much in my masculine for a very long time to the point that I was actually really proud of it. You know, I was mm-hmm. like, yeah, I'm not in that feminine, uh, too much makeup on my face, hysterical, <laughs> emotional, lazy energy. No, I'm a badass. I'm strong. I'm in my masculine. Mm-hmm. I had no idea. I was completely like mixing up concepts, but it was really a, a deep ingrained belief because with my girlfriends 10 years ago, when I was still living in Belgium, we had a mojo, which was, we are not girls. So mm. we were always saying, on n'est pas des filles, which was like, we're not hysterical, emotional, and just stupid girls, but we are pretty smart and badassy. Mm. What I wasn't understanding is that I actually meant we're not the wounded feminine, we're the divine feminine. Mm-hmm. Mm. And so I went on a journey of healing myself, and it all really started with a dream that kept coming back over and over again. I was doing that dream of being in a beautiful city. Imagine Paris or New York, walking around, stylish outfit. (laughs) (laughs) And then there's a guy coming to me and uh, he says that I'm beautiful. He's taking me by the hand. He's bringing me to a hotel room. He's kissing me, undressing me, making love to me. And then he Mm -hmm. says, you're the love of my life. I want to marry you. Mm -hmm. And I suddenly freak out thinking, oh my God, no, I can't marry you. I'm already committed to someone else. Mm. And I leave. And I would wake up from that dream like I just did it. The biggest mistake of my life. I had a horrific feeling that I just cheated on my boyfriend, now husband. Mm. And it was really horrible. And that dream kept coming back. So I was like, well, I really have to understand what this dream means. And so I hired a a dream therapist. And um, long story short, she made me see that that man in my dream was my masculine. Mm. And my masculine was a little bit abusive because imagine walking around the streets and having a guy propose to you and making love to you five minutes after you met him. (laughs) Pretty (laughs) intense, right? (laughs) Yes. And really leading the way. And that's how I was living my life. My masculine was leading the way, thinking he knew what my feminine wanted, but Mm. never asking her if that was okay with her. Mm Mm-hmm. And actually, the feminine is supposed to lead because your feminine energy is your desire energy. When you're in your feminine, you're daydreaming, you're creative, you're very much connected to your desires. And you need to be in your feminine to have your true soul desires show up. And then you can ask your masculine to show up and be like, okay, what do we need to do? What Mm -hmm. are the foundations? What's the structure? And then you delegate to your masculine, basically. Mm -hmm. And then the masculine sets the scene and all the foundation then for the feminine to birth, finally, the project or idea that you have. Mm. So it's a sacred dance. Mm. I think it's so interesting to hear you talk about the feminine leading because yeah. I, I think we're always, I always hear things like the feminine is supposed to respond or, fo- or follow, but I love how you phrase it about leading, but leading in a different way than we, I think, typically envision leadership to look like. Can you go a little deeper into that? So it's really leading uh, with the vision. Mm. A leader is a visionary. 
he knows where he wants to go and he knows how to bring the team there. So the feminine is really going to lead with her desire and with her vision. But she definitely needs the masculine to bring it into matter and to make sure that you have all the tools, all the structure, all the planning mm -hmm. to then make it happen. So to give you a very concrete example, um, I went, well, let's use the example of how I wrote the book, The Path yes. of Femininity. I was doing a meditation, feminine energy, and I suddenly had the hit of, you need to write a book. I had already written a book two years before, so I was like, okay, you know, not such a surprising thought, but I wasn't expecting to have that thought in that meditation. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I'm going to wait a little bit longer. The masculine would have been like, okay, let's go and do, do, do. I was like, no, I'm going to wait. I'm just going to see if it's aligned and if I have more signs. And I did receive signs that I needed to write a book about the feminine and feminine energy. So I thought, okay, sure, I'm going to start. And so I had a bit of an idea. So that's where my masculine then showed up of, I sat behind my laptop, I wrote a few ideas down, maybe a little bit of a table of contents, and then I left it there. And I waited to be inspired again. Mm -hmm. So I waited to then have an idea, which everything that's intuitive, inspiration, creative, that's the feminine again. And so I would have the inspiration because I would be walking around. I live in, a, in Squamish, which is surrounded by nature. We have lots of forests and mountains here. So I go for walks a lot. I will be walking around, have an idea, and then come back home, sit behind my laptop. Masculine would take the lead at the moment and then start mm. writing. So it's a dance always between the one and the other, but it really has to start with the feminine because it has to start with the inspiration. Because mm -hmm. if you work by following your inspiration and your creativity, you're in flow. Mm -hmm. And you can create so much. I mean, I launched a podcast. I wrote a book. I moved into a house. I had a baby. Mm -hmm. And I made almost a six-figure year. All that while working half of the year. And now that I'm working again, since I had my baby, I'm working like 10 hours a week. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that's a lot. Yeah. And that's because I'm in flow. But if you're in your masculine, you're going to be like, okay, I have a to-do list. I'm going to start number one, number two, number three. And you're going to push and you're not going to work with your inspiration and creativity. You're going to work because you think you should be doing that right now mm -hmm. and because you want to publish that program next week. And so you have to talk about it on social media and send emails out and you're going to struggle and hustle. Mm -hmm. So it might work, but you're going to be drained by it completely. It's not going to give you energy and it's not going to be as aligned because people buy from your energy. So it's not going to be as success successful either. Mm -hmm. You see the difference? Yes. Absolutely. I'm thinking about, so I love the title of your book, The, the Path of Femininity. Mm -hmm. To begin that path, I think like you shared, mo a lot of us, most of us, um, start from a more masculine dominated place. Mm -hmm. And I'm definitely <laughs> one of those people. If we're going to start this path, you know, how does one begin? Like, what are some easy ways, yeah. some implementable ways to bring, to tap into that divine feminine, like on the daily? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So the first step is awareness, as with everything, right? So it's being aware of what are the characteristics of my masculine? What are the characteristics of my feminine? And I would go even deeper. What are the characteristics of my wounded feminine and mm. my divine feminine? So your masculine, that's that part of you that's doing, taking action, uh, planning, structuring, providing, and giving. Right now, the three of us, we're in our masculine. Mm. Okay? And that's okay, because when you have a business, you need to be in your masculine. Otherwise... Mm -hmm. If we're too much in our feminine, we would just have ideas and be dreaming up there and nothing would really come in mm -hmm. the matter. So when you're really working, basically, you're in your masculine. And then um, your feminine, your wounded feminine is that part of yourself that is 
craving connection and that is feeling needy. Is mm. that part of yourself that feels unsafe and that is sometimes going to even negate a part of herself in order to fit in, mm. in order to be loved. I think we all have parts of ourselves that we don't always share freely. Maybe it's spiritual experiences that we've had. We're not going to talk about that freely at a Friday evening dinner. Who knows? <laughs> maybe you're surrounded by very spiritual people. That would be awesome. <laughs> but as women, we're very intuitive. It's one of the gifts of the feminine. And we all have curious experiences, but that we don't always talk about mm -hmm. because we want to be loved and we want to fit in. And so being aware of that and just recognizing that you're safe already and that the more you step into your own authenticity, the more you're going to allow others to also be authentic. And authenticity really means showing your true self to the world, sharing your true gifts with the world, because that's what you came here to do. Mm -hmm. And so the path of femininity, stepping into your divine feminine, starts with stepping into your authenticity. Moving away from the wounded feminine into the divine authentic feminine by being yourself. The masculine is doing, the feminine is being. Mm. But she's not just being the smiley girl, the nice <laughs> girl, the good girl. You know, we all know how to do that. Right. No, she's being her badass self. Because... Mm -hmm. The divine feminine, you know, we have this idea that she's a goddess and smiley and sweet <laughs> and da 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 da. No, no, no. She can be very firm and she has very strong boundaries and she's not afraid to claim who she is. Yes. Does that answer your question? Absolutely. Uh, I love um, how you described, you know, being led by your feminine, you're following your desires. And I find, a question that comes up with my clients most often is like, it sounds great for you to tell me that, you know, I can manifest my desires, I can manifest my wildest dreams, but what if I don't know what my desires are? And I'm curious mm. what your tip is into beginning to tap into. And I think it's ultimately about trusting your desires. Like we don't want to yeah. admit what our desires are. Um, but what what would you, what would you um, guide someone who says, you know, this sounds great to be led by my desires, but I have no idea what they are. Yeah. So I think I think you're right. We all know what our desires are, but either we don't trust them mm -hmm. or we have pushed them so far away that we're actually kind of disconnected from them. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like emotions. Sometimes you push them away so far that you don't even know how to welcome them anymore. But, you know, they're boiling there inside yeah. of you. Yeah. Um, so I have a fun question that I like to ask my clients, which is, if you were a bad girl, <laughs> one day you could do whatever you wanted and you wouldn't be put in jail or nobody would ever <laughs> criticize you or, you know, you had a free pass, what would you do? Yeah. And then, you know, you start so being awesome. creative and you're like, ooh, I can do everything I want, really? <laughs> All right. Then the desires show up. I love that. I'm curious because you've mentioned the good girl and the bad girl. Um, I kind of want to dig into that a little bit because I think as a society, like we value the good girl and then to tap into the bad girl is some sort of dark sort of taboo thing. But I think we all have a balance of the good girl and the bad girl in us. And I'm yeah. curious to hear more about that. So the good girl, it's really that part of yourself that is sweet, nice, polite, says thank you, she knows how to behave, and she keeps her emotions down. Mm. Don't scream, don't make too much noise, don't cry, da, 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 all these things that we've been taught mm -hmm. because our parents were really doing the best they could and society has been doing the best uh, uh, she could. And so the bad girl is actually that version of you that knows she can have a very healthy relationship with her emotions. Mm. And that is not afraid of expressing them because she knows they have gifts to give to her. Mm -hmm. Especially the divine feminine, the bad girl, how I, how I call it, is um, 
very connected to her anger. Mm. Because your anger is there to show you that you need to set boundaries. Mm. Think about it. Last time you were angry, it's because someone pushed you a bit too far. Right. So you might have been angry against that person, but also maybe angry towards yourself because you didn't say anything or you allowed it to happen. So the bad girl is really the that version of you that's going to step up and say, no, 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 this is not okay. You're not talking to me like that. And if you would like to talk to me like that, of course, that's your choice. But then I'm gone because mm -hmm. I'm not interested by that. And the bad girl is also that version of yourself that has healed her three feminine wounds. Mm. So in the chapter of the gift of authenticity, which is really the bridge, what I, what I was talking about before, the bridge between the wounded and the divine feminine, you're going to step into healing. I'm sure you've already heard about it. You're going to start healing the bitch wound, the witch wound, and the horror wound. Mm -hmm. Do you girls know what these are? I've heard of... I didn't know about the witch wound. Oh, okay. But I want to hear about all Let's of them. Let's talk about all, all of, them of them for please. our listeners. <laughs> I know a little bit, but I'm curious to learn more. Yeah. So, I mean, I could do whole masterclass on this. <laughs> really a lot to say. But let's try to keep it simple. It is believed that the three feminine wounds have been passed down by Mary Magdalene. Mm. Because Mary Magdalene was called a whore. We know her as a prostitute. That's how the church has described her for a very, very long time. Um, and some other texts call her a witch and a bitch because Mary Magdalene was very independent. Mm -hmm. A lot of channeled books talk about her and explain how she was not tied to any man. She didn't want to be tied to any man until she met Jesus, the one. Mm -hmm. And um, she was called a bitch because she said no. Mm -hmm. And so we have that wound today because we're afraid to say no. As women, we're really good at knowing what other people's needs are mm -hmm. and at giving them what they need. And again, we give, we give, we give, we deplete ourselves. And we're afraid of saying, no, my darling, I can't cook for you right now. I've had a very long day. I'll give you a banana. I'll have a bath. I'll read my book and then I'll take care of you. Mm. Which mother is going to do that? Or which girl is going to do that to her best friend? I need to take care of myself first and then I'll be there for you. Mm -hmm. That's really the idea of the bitch wound. But I really like to rephrase it because the bitch is actually a loving and caring woman. Because if you say no to something that's not aligned for you and you take care of yourself first, you are then able to give your best self later on when you're ready to say yes, if you're ever ready to say yes. Right. And that's the most loving and caring thing that you can do because you're giving your best to the person that's asking for your attention. I love um, sort of like reclaiming and rephrasing the word bitch. Yeah. There's a book that I've read and I, I think that I took it too literally. There was a lot of good stuff in it, but I, I don't know if I'd recommend it fully but there was a book called why men love bitches and it kind of gets into this this concept of it's not about you know men or women or people liking a mean girl it's about it being very attractive when somebody has a boundary and is not treated like a doormat and mm -hmm. is very clear about like who they are and what they want and what they're available for and and um i just love you know, it's like, what was that that phrase for a while? Like, bitches get it done. Like, mm. I don't know. I just love he hearing this in, in a, it's no, I, it's no longer an insult. <laughs> it's no <laughs> longer an insult. Absolutely. And, but that's because when you have really firm boundaries, it's actually a sign of self-love and self-respect. Mm -hmm. And because we live in a world of energy and everything is an energetical match and a mirror of who you are, if mm -hmm. you're in a space of self-love and self-respect for yourself, 
well, your partner, your friends, your clients are going to love you and respect you even more. Right. So that's the bitch wounds. <laughs> and then we have the witch wounds. Mm -hmm. Mary Magdalene, again, she was, um, she was stoned. So she was thrown stones because she was super intuitive, super wise. And she was getting wisdom that was not rational, but very powerful. And that was mm -hmm. scaring men. So the witch wound is that part of yourself that is going to dim your light, dim your intuitive power, not talk about your gifts or your spiritual experiences because you're afraid of being rejected and being criticized for it. Mm. Like I had some spiritual experiences when I was a kid. We lived in a haunted house. <laughs> More on so that later. We love asking and... about that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, then I have to tell you how I received the teachings of this book, because that's a very interesting story. Ooh, too. Oh, okay. gosh. Okay, yes. <laughs> All right. And so I, I had some encounters with some spirits when I was a kid, and I was talking about it because, I don't know, it's just something that had happened to me. Mm -hmm. And until this day, people are making fun of me because of that. And... Um, now I kind of smile because I'm like, well, it's actually sad that mm -hmm. you're not honoring your own intuitive gifts to the point that you have to make fun of me. Right. So I don't take it personally. But for years, then I stopped talking about it because I was like, okay, well, this isn't being made fun of. It's not serious. Maybe I am crazy. So mm -hmm. you dim your lights. Mm -hmm. And so it can be having psychic abilities, but it can also be just singing. Whatever gifting you have, some people, and you know, maybe you girls recognize yourself in that, that there's a small part of yourself that you think is too much or that is going to bother others. And so you're not expressing it. That's the witch wound. Oh, I, I, I work through that. I didn't even know that's what it was called. Yeah, yeah. Whoa. That's definitely been a, a theme of the past like two years for us, I think. Mm -hmm. and, this podcast has been very healing being able to talk to so many different mm. um, amazing women that you know embrace their gifts and that's kind of why we started this podcast because we both came into like psychic intuitive abilities and wanted to share that journey of it like all being awesome. new and um so yeah i i didn't realize that's what we have been working on the past like almost two years together awesome Good. And so let's get to the third gift, third wound, sorry, which is the whore wound. Mm -hmm. And for me, that's the deepest wound of all. Mm. Because the whore wound, it's really um, that version of you that's very connected to her sensuality, to mm -hmm. her body, to her sexuality. And that is afraid, though, to express her sexuality too much because it's going to create shame. Mm. I'm sure it happened to you that you slept with a guy at some point in your life and maybe it was a one night stand or maybe it was two days after another guy, who knows? Mm -hmm. You were in your body just empower empowered by your sexuality and you were called a whore for it. Mm -hmm. Or if you wear a décolleté that's a bit too revealing or a skirt that's a bit too short, too short, or if you dance in a way that's too sensual, you're going to be criticized for it. Mm -hmm. And that's the whore wound. And for me, it comes like it's a huge societal programming that comes mm -hmm. from Mary Magdalene, of course. But Mary Magdalene, she had uh, followed trainings in uh, sacred sexuality and in sex magic. And she knew that sexuality was actually the source of your power. And you can have very big intuitive hits when you have an orgasm. And if you use these sacred practices with your partner and can increase your healing abilities, your magnetism, you can send your energy to your auric field. I mean, there are a lot of practices that you can do. She knew about that and she trained Jesus in them. Mm. And men were really afraid of her power because they didn't understand it. And so when you hear the word whore, you can reframe it with the word priestess. Mm. Ooh, I love that. And also, what a woman. I'm learning so much about Miss Mary. 
Ms. Yeah. Mary. Ms. Mary. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> she's Mary. the embodiment of the divine feminine. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Oh, wow. I want to hear about how you channeled your book. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So um, to give you a little bit of context, um, I trained for two years as an energy healer. I'm a Reiki master and SEM healer. Um, I trained in Montreal. And so I have quite a lot of um, knowledge about channeling, but it had never happened to me until this story happened. So basically, um, I was doing that meditation, had the hint that I needed to write a book about the divine feminine, started to receive signs, started writing a few things, but really I wasn't pressuring myself. And I thought, you know, I, I'm a bit confused at what I'm going to write in this book exactly, but I guess it's going to come. Mm -hmm. And I love writing. It's always been uh, in my blood. I wrote my first book when I was 12, so I wasn't really stressed about the whole thing. And then I'm pregnant. So that was uh, December last year, a year ago. And I'm, I think I was, yeah, four months pregnant at the time. So you're very psychic when you're pregnant, very intuitive. Do you girls have kids? No, uh, yeah. um, but it's something that we'll I, I don't know, that I just intuitively knew that that happens to women when they become pregnant where I was like you definitely become more magical and like oh, yeah. more tuned in I feel like because how how could I you mean, not you have a, like a soul growing absolutely you. you're a portal yeah absolutely <laughs> and the baby is connected to the spirit world and the human world mm. and so you're a bridge at that moment yeah. so I was very intuitive and we go for a little weekend getaway in uh, Whistler. We live really close to Whistler in Canada, which is a really nice ski resort. And uh, we sleep there in a hotel and I had cleaned the room energetically. I always do that when I go to a hotel because there are so many energies in hotel rooms. Yeah. Oh my God. Thank God we don't see them. That would be scary. Anyway. <laughs> I do the um, same. I'm like clapping in all the corners to like yeah. get up energy. So I always clean the, the room. And I go to bed and I wake up at 4 a.m. And it's interesting because it always happens at 4 a.m. 4 a.m. is a very special hour mm. energetically. And um, I wake up from that dream. And I in that dream, I had seen a friend who's an energy healer as well. She was dressed as a priestess. And she said to me, Ele, that version of you that smiles and does what's expected of her, that's not going to work anymore. In 2021, you have to show up with your authenticity and your originality. Mm. So I wake up from that dream and I'm like, whoa, the message was pretty clear. Yeah. I'm going to write it down because I don't want to forget it. So I take my phone, I start writing it down and I start having more downloads, more information. And I start understanding what authenticity really means. And I'm like, oh, wow, this is cool. So I keep writing it down on my phone, put my phone down, head on the pillow. I try to fall asleep again and then boom, another download. And I was like, wait a second, I have to write this down. And it's very particular because it's like I was receiving information in one second that could contain a 10 minute speech. And the information was very multidimensional. Like it was really hard to actually express it in a linear language, but I tried because I wanted to remember everything. And basically that went on for an hour to the point where uh, they gave me the title of the book and the subtitle. And I said, okay, six gifts of your sovereignty, of your feminine. I get, I can see four of them, but I don't see the two others. And then I heard, don't worry, you'll discover them. Wow. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay. And at some point, you know, of one hour of going back and forth of like thinking it's finished and I can sleep and then writing on my <laughs> phone again. Uh, I'm like, okay, guys, this is becoming too much. Like I'm feeling uh, it's just becoming too much. I can feel it in my body. So I ask her to, I ask them. I say them because I think they were like four or five, but I'm more uh, kinesthetic than really visual. Mm -hmm. uh, so I asked them to stop. And at that moment, I really feel my third eye closing like two doors, bam, slamming and closing. Wow. And then I started feeling a huge energy wave 
But because I am an energy healer, I knew that this transmission came with a whole energy update and that I just needed to ground myself, breathe. After that, I was really cold, typical. And then I put a jumper on, had some water and um, went back to sleep. And I remember thinking, oh my God, like, I have no idea at this, the whole wisdom and intelligence that I just received here. We human beings have no idea really of how the spiritual world functions. And I don't know, th this whole planet Earth thing that we're doing. Right. <laughs> I was like so impressed. And I was like, I, I have to talk about this. I have to share these teachings and it's very interesting because the six gifts of the feminine uh so one of the gifts that i didn't know was the gift of surrender mm. and um when i understood that i had to talk about surrendering i was like wait a minute but I'm not really good at surrendering like i've been <laughs> really good at controlling <laughs> yeah um and then it's very interesting because life, quote unquote, just put on my journey a lot of experiences that taught me more about these gifts, because I really had to embody these gifts and that feminine energy and understand them through experiences so that I could actually talk and write about it. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's really beautiful. So you yeah, believe it okay. was four or five spirit guides that yeah. came and brought this. Do you feel, were these guides that you felt like you'd worked with before? Were they no. family member, it's brand new? No, I think my main guide uh, was there, but uh, I, I didn't recognize the other energies. Hmm. Wow. Or maybe I had never really talked to them because apparently I have a whole squad up there. <laughs> Yeah, of course. But, you know, we don't always interact with all of them, even though they're supporting us. Uh, but they were new energies, yeah. So they told, well, they told you eventually, surrender. Yeah. What are the other five? So, yeah, the first gift of the feminine is authenticity, because that's really what's helping you move away from your wounded energy to your divine energy. And then after authenticity, the more you're authentic, the more you step into who you are, the more you become magnetic, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So magnetism is another gift of the feminine. And then you have intuition, surrender, receiving, because the feminine receives, and then grounding. Mm. And when I talk about grounding, it's not just being connected to Mother Earth. It's really having your soul fully embodied in your body and using your body as a vehicle to come and do your purpose. Mm. I love that. I've never thought of gifts, gifts of femininity. That's mm -hmm. so beautiful. I like, it's I really that. the idea that um, gifts are also frequencies. Mm. It's abilities, behaviors that you have inside of yourself that you were doing naturally when you were a kid. You were naturally intuitive, naturally mm. grounded, naturally magnetic and fully yourself. I mean, look at kids, how they scream and run in the streets. It's so beautiful to watch. Yeah. It's super inspiring for us. They don't hold back. And so it's really part of yourself that you have inside of you and that I'm inviting you to reactivate through exercises that I share in the book. I need to get this book. I'm I like, know, me too. <laughs> <laughs> I like your voice and your beautiful accent. I just feel like keep having chills this whole time and I Thank feel you. like, like I don't know, I just feel sort of like, oh, like you're raising my vibration. Uh -huh. <laughs> like, like, I feel like I'm on a cloud. <laughs> like I can't form questions. <laughs> We switch off. Some weeks um, I go up on the cloud and, <laughs> and Sadie asks the questions and some weeks Sadie's up in the cloud. Yes. But, but it's it's good when I'm not in the cloud <laughs> because my questions when I'm in the cloud, if you've been a listener, are really bad. <laughs> They're funny. <laughs> I wanted also to... Oh, go ahead. Know, being on the cloud, that's also being in your feminine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Being in that very relaxed, daydreaming energy. There's no pressure, nothing to achieve. All is good. That's very feminine energy. So you're just stepping into your feminine right now. We are. 
Um, I think the the gift of grounding is something really special, and I wanted to chat about that a little bit more because um, in my own journey, like strengthening my intuition and, and, and sharing that with others, I've found that we can kind of think of our intuition or our connection to like spirit and how we receive creative downloads as something that exists outside of ourselves. And more recently I've been learning about how like, no, that it's actually all exists within my body. And it's not like something that when I'm looking for an intuitive download, I have to like visualize this connection to the sky. It's in me. So if you have any sort of um, tips for grounding in the body to invite that in. You know, it's very interesting what you're saying because um, we think that everything about spirituality is very upward energy. Mm -hmm. Actually, it's very downward energy. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of ancient systems who knew that because they were building pyramids that then had caves where you could go in the earth and connect with Mother Earth and oh. then have downloads there. So it's a very... very um, it's, it's both direction and uh, a psychic once told me that the energy is actually coming all the way from your seventh chakra, but it has to go to your root chakra and connect to the earth in order to then come as an intuitive hit mm. in your body. So you need to be very, very grounded, very in your body, very connected to the earth as well in order to receive the guidance of your soul. And so the tips that I give to, to my clients um, I think one of my favorite tips is to invite my clients to connect with their womb. Mm. Because your womb is really that portal. Like you said it earlier, you're a portal, you're carrying life, you're carrying a baby. But much more than that, you're carrying IDs. And so your womb is really um, that portal to, to source and to your soul. And I love to invite my clients to connect with their womb by doing a yoni steam. Because when you're doing a yoni steam, you're sitting there, you're receiving the healing frequencies from the herbs that you put in the pot, and you also receive downloads. It's really fun. I've mm. had very fun experiences just, uh, you know, being postpartum and doing a yoni steam to heal myself. And it was really a moment for myself. And you're slowing down and you're receiving as well which then works with the gift of receiving because you're opening yourself to receive more of what you desire, whether it's love, money, clients, etc. Mm -hmm. I love that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do you girls practice uni steams? I haven't. I've mm -hmm. always been curious, but I'm like, I don't know where to start with that. I guess I, <laughs> I should just dive in. <laughs> it's very easy. You can just um, get a pot with really hot water mm -hmm. and you can put lavender roses in it so roses are the flowers that have the highest frequency mm -hmm. they're very connected to the divine feminine as well you put roses in it and then you can flush the water from your toilet and put the pot with the steaming water and the herbs in your toilet and you can just sit there oh that's easiest easy way enough. to start guess what we're doing later <laughs> <laughs> we'll report back. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's I've really, never really powerful. I've never tried that. I think I this is TMI. I think I always thought it would make me itchy in some way, but I guess mm. it wouldn't if it's just some steam. rose steam. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it, it's going to <laughs> relax you, and it's really nice because you get warm really from the inside out, mm. and uh, it's going to heal every kind of. Um, sexual trauma that you have had, every kind of abuse, or what's also very interesting is to know that all sorts of distrust or trust issues that you might have had are imprinted in your uni lips. Oh, wow. Talk more about that. <laughs> your uni lips, they're the door of your sacred temple, of your body. Mm. And so every time you said yes, when you meant no, that has created a kind of distrust and has been energetically imprinted in your yoni lips. So it can be in a sexual exchange. I mean, it, oops, 
Sorry. <laughs> it all happened to us that uh, we said yes at some point to our partner, even if we weren't really in the mood. But we're like, okay, I can get in the mood, I guess. Mm. But it can also be just uh, saying yes to a friend that's really needing help but you don't really want to do it, but you're saying yes. Or saying yes to a family member because uh, they want to invite you over for dinner, but you really don't want to go because you have more things to do, but you don't want to be rude. You know, mm -hmm. all sorts of situations where you said yes and you actually meant no. That's breaking your trust with yourself. Wow. And that's imprinted in your yoni lips. And by doing yoni's team, if you put the intention of releasing all sorts of energetical and emotional block that is in your womb, you're going to release that, which is then going to help you be much more connected to the earth, to the wisdom of Mother Earth, let go of control, be able to surrender much more, be much more in flow. And you know, you see how it snowballs and mm -hmm. leads to a lot of good things. <laughs> Well, I think top of the year, we're going to have to do that. Yes. We'll, we'll do it together. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I wanted to ask about how all of these things are helpful for feminine entrepreneurs. I know that's mm -hmm. a part of a big Absolutely. part of what you do. Yep. So I love to work with women entrepreneurs because I think that entrepreneurship is just a way for your soul to evolve further and for mm. you to bring your gifts to life. Mm -hmm. And so I love to work with women and help them really identify their genius and transform that into magnetic offers and then let go of all sorts of spiritual and emotional blocks that might be in the way of helping you have more abundance. And so a very powerful tip that I always give my clients is that when you're a woman entrepreneur, you're very much in your masculine because you need to, because you mm -hmm. need to show up, you need to take action, you need to do, you need to serve your clients, and that's all masculine energy. But because we live in a world of balance and duality, when you are in your masculine, the world around you is in his, her feminine energy. So then your clients and the universe, your co-creator, is in feminine energy when you're in masculine energy. So they are receiving and you are doing. Mm. But if you want to receive clients, if you want your clients to sign up to your one-on-one -on -one program, courses, or whatever it is that you're doing, or listen to your podcast, you need to be in your feminine so that they can have the masculine role and take action and come and sign up to your program. Mm. Ooh, so that felt so good. Yeah. That felt so good to hear that. Okay, go on. Sorry. <laughs> very, very important when you have a business to have moments in your day where you go back to your feminine energy, where you go have a bath, where you go make love to your partner. Very powerful because money energy is sexual energy. Could also mm -hmm. talk about that for a whole two hours. <laughs> so... <laughs> Just go back in your feminine energy, do a yoni steam, go for a walk, and that's going to help you have more clients. Mm -hmm. Really, it works. Mm -hmm. when, you know, we always talk about the cliche of the woman entrepreneur that's on the beach signing clients and having money come her way. Mm -hmm. Everyone's dream. But when you understand the energetics of uh, feminine and masculine energy and the energetics of success, it makes complete sense because she's just relaxing, being in her feminine, allowing the universe to send the right people her way and allowing these people to be in the masculine role and to take action and to sign up. It's pretty incredible because I've had some big breakthroughs in the past few months practicing this where like I was like today I'm just gonna do what I want to do and have fun and like celebrate myself and then the next day I had like an unexpected thousand dollar day you know from doing absolutely, absolutely nothing <laughs> uh, so it's pretty incredible and I, I definitely want to chat more about how money and sex are very related because that was also a breakthrough I had this year when I became more authentic in having a sex life that looked more like what I wanted, but maybe a little bit different than what other people do, um, I started making a lot more money and it was very obviously mm. connected. Um, yeah. So I'd love to hear more about the money sex connection. It's very, very connected. So sexuality is all around connection and relationships. 
money is all about connection and relationships. Mm -hmm. When you are in sacred sexuality and you have an orgasm, you connect to your power. You feel so powerful. Money is also power these days. Mm -hmm. Sexual energy is creative energy. You can create life with that. Money energy is creative energy. What do you do with your money? Mm -hmm. You create dreams, you create, you bring life to your ideas, you create. Mm -hmm. In order to have sex, especially for women, you need to open and to surrender. Mm -hmm. In order to have money, you need to be open to receive. I could go on like that. Yeah. So really money and sexuality, they're just the two sides of the same coin. Mm -hmm. It's the same energy. And so the more you honor your sexuality through self-touch or through talking with your partner and expressing what you like or don't like, through honoring your desires, the more money you're going to have. And for feminine essence beings, really like us, but there are also men that identify more with feminine energy and that's mm -hmm. completely fine and normal. Um, you really need to have explored your sexual underworld desire energy before you can actually manifest everything that you desire in your life mm. because it's very connected to your creative power. It's interesting because, yeah, it's something so deeply intimate with yourself. So if you can't honor your desires in that way, how can you honor your desires out there? Yeah, it's really interesting. It's like it yeah. always starts at home. It always starts with you. And then it has this beautiful ripple effect out into your other areas of your life. Because when you think about it, um, money is just an energy. There are a lot of stigma and judgment that we put on money, mm -hmm. but money is just love made visible. Mm. Love that you receive from source through clients, through your employer, through gifts. Money is just love. Absolutely. And it allows you to create a life that you love. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've, I think I've said this before. I heard a phrase that said, money is a moving prayer. Mm -hmm. And it made me feel so good about spending. And I'm much, that was a big thing for me the past year. I'm, I'm much more of like a hoarder and a saver. <laughs> but to think of it as, a, as love and as a moving prayer makes it feel so good. And you can feel the energy behind it and also mm -hmm. the connection to um, our sexuality and our sexual desires. It's so spot on. If we're not allowing ourselves to receive what we want, it's going to, That's then that's how that's what our energy is. Oh, my, mm. energetically, I don't allow myself to receive what I want. And then that's going to overflow into money and other Absolutely. areas. And it can be as simple as receiving a compliment or asking for help and receiving it. Because the way you do one thing is the way you do everything, right? Right. Mm -hmm. And so you can start by just opening yourself to receiving compliments and love and attention and saying thank you. Mm -hmm. That's a... Um, Something that I tell my clients to to do as well is that every time you spend money, say thank you to money. Because mm. then you start building a relationship with that energy that just wants to give you love. And if you say thank you, well, then you're going to receive more. So every time I receive or spend my money, I say thank you, money. Mm -hmm. I love that. Yeah, I... Uh... I love trying to build my relationship with money is like we're best friends we're besties like yeah. we're supporting <laughs> each other because if you yeah if you make money this enemy which i felt like for a long time like looking at my bank account stressed me out and um every every bit of money exiting my life was like some sort of drain on me and it's like well how am i supposed to build up abundance and welcome more in if it's this like scary stressful enemy energy um so that's been very very healing to yeah there is so nurture. much to so much to rewire about money mm -hmm. which is which is a shame because um money is just a tool right mm -hmm. it's it's nothing you know if you have a lot of money on your bank account it's just there sitting 
Right. Mm -hmm. It's it's giving you access to do other things. It's a tool to do other things, but otherwise it's just numbers on on your phone. (laughs) Yeah, Mm. truly, truly. I want to circle back and ask you if you want to talk about it. Th- what happened in your haunted house? <laughs> I can't get that off my mind. Oh yeah, we like to ask everyone <laughs> that on the all of our guests if they have a spooky story. So um, it doesn't have to be scary spooky, but something paranormal or um, sort of like a psychic experience. And this haunted house sounds interesting. If you'd like yeah. to share more about that, <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, I mean, I have a better uh, psychic story that I want to that I can share with you if you guys mm-hmm. are interested. Oh yes, absolutely. Okay. So when I was doing my energy healing training in, uh, in Montreal, um, the teacher organized a spiritual trip to Israel. Mm. And when you go to Israel, you're of course going on the path of Jesus um, and going to all these sacred spaces. And at the end of the trip, we go to Jerusalem, of course, and we go to this huge cathedral that is built on the cave where he was born. <clears throat> mm. And we were really doing this whole trip with a very spiritual approach, trying to feel the energy, trying to connect with our soul and our spirit guides when we would be there. Uh, It was not religious at all. It was more like our connection with God and we just take from it what we want. Mm. So it was really fun. And um, we go to that cathedral and there's a huge line, of course, because it's one of the, the main places to go and visit when you go to Jerusalem. And it's really hot because we're in the month of June and we're queuing for one hour, two hour. We're getting really, really close to the cave and you have to take steps down and then you see the cave. You can touch a stone, kiss a stone because this is where Jesus was born and then you leave at the the cave. And just when we're at the stairs to go down, I start feeling a huge backache. So my lower back's really painful. And I was on my periods, which is typical. You're much more intuitive and psychic when you're on your periods. Mm-hmm. And um, I bow forward thinking, oh, this is just going to stretch my back a bit. It's because we've been standing for two hours. So I bend forward, I come back up and suddenly I feel super dizzy. And apparently mm-hmm. I'm all white. Mm. And so I, I like tap on the shoulder of my teacher. I'm like, I'm not feeling really well. She's like, oh, yeah, you're completely white. Sit down. And so the spiritual teacher that was with us, she was also a nurse. She was trained in uh, uh, nursing. And so she takes my pulse and she can't feel it. So she's like, put your head down. <laughs> There's something going wrong. Oh, <laughs> and no. water, And she's splashing water all over me. And I'm like, I'm really not feeling well. I feel like I'm going to throw up. Like, this is not okay. And then she gives a big sign to a security guy. And she, she says to him, can you take her on sign? Because she's not feeling well. And the guy is like... Oh, well, you know, it's just too hot and she's young. She's going to be okay. And so he takes me um, outside and on the way he's like, oh, well, wait, there's the exit of the cave. You want to go and see it? And I'm completely dizzy. Like, I just want to close my eyes and go where I'm called to go. (laughs) And um, I say, okay, whatever. I go in the in the cave and then I'm really not feeling well. I'm like, I can't even walk. And so he takes a chair and puts me at the outside of the cave saying, well, your friends are going to come in a minute. So I sit there on that chair, really miserable, (laughs) still completely white. And then the teacher comes out two, three minutes later and she sees my face and then she's like, okay, I understand now what's happening. You're having an initiation. And I'm like, what? She's like, you're having, you have to come back. You're gonna have to like choose to come back. You've just received a huge amount of energy from your guides. This is the place where Jesus was born and you're being asked to be reborn again. Wow. And I was like, but I'm really feeling bad. And I mean, you're talking to me, but I'm not here. She's like, I know, but you have to come back. And I was feeling anxious. I just wanted to close my eyes and sleep. And she was like, no, 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 you don't sleep because I don't <laughs> want to bring you to the hospital. You're fainting and that's that's not okay. And so that's a very typical response from the body. 
hmm. because your the energy is so intense that your nervous system has to like get used to it and so sleeping and falling unconscious is just a way for the body to get, take in the energy take care of what's more important and then wake you up when you're ready but she was like i don't want to call your mother saying you're at the hospital <laughs> so you're gonna have to stay awake and you're gonna choose to come back and i was like oh okay my God. <laughs> so there were five people around me they were all trained in in reiki and they were all like trying to press my pressure point to ground me, make me come back. And um, the security people came and they were like, what are you doing there with like six people around you? <laughs> Get up and just leave because you're just at the exit of this cave. There are a lot of people I want to come. <laughs> you're making a scene. <laughs> yeah, like you're uh, 28 years old, like what's wrong? <laughs> <laughs> you're fine. <laughs> yeah. And so I tried to get up, but I couldn't. I couldn't walk. Wow. My knees were like shaking. My whole body was shaking. And so uh, I, they had to like ground myself and I had to really talk myself through it. Like I'm choosing to come back. I'm choosing this life. Uh, it's like really my soul at that moment uh, kind of had a choice to come back or to exit. I don't know if I would have exited to that point, but wow. I could have been could have been bad. And um, after 10, 15 minutes, I felt a bit better and they really carried me. I was barely walking out of the, out of the cathedral and then uh, I slept for two days. Wow. Okay. Can I tell you, this is very validating for me, <laughs> the sleep portion. One time, one time I had Reiki done on me mm. by... Um, the old manager where we worked after you left there was a manager and she was amazing um but i didn't feel anything in in the moment but the next day i slept for like 16 out like some Ooh. crazy amount of time woke up and then <laughs> fainted and fell on a table and then whatever she had what the intention was the thing was no longer a problem anymore and so it's just so validating to hear you talk about how there's sort of energy work being done while we sleep. That's what, you know, one mm -hmm. of the reasons yeah. sleep is so vital. Yeah, and it's also um, not just that energy work is done while we sleep, it's that the body is making you sleep when it needs to prioritize healing, energy mm. healing work. Mm. So after the two days of sleep, did you feel different? Did, like like what what came of nope. that <laughs> <laughs> wow my teacher was like you had a satori and satori it's the buddhist name for like enlightenment illumination she was like you're the little buddha from belgium i was like oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it was really sweet you know she really likes me and believed in me and we still have a very uh, good connection she's she's a spiritual mother to me really um, but no, I, I think it just, uh, it set me up on the spiritual path that I am now mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because I definitely changed a lot that year and the following year, uh, too much for certain people around me, but that's okay. I just stepped into my power and mm -hmm. really being my most authentic self. Yes. Wow. And I think that, um, the energy that I received that day just, uh, gave me the trust and the confidence to do it. And, uh, I would say that I am more psychic uh, now, but is it because of that or because I've been giving a lot of energy healing treatments myself and receiving a lot as well? It's difficult to just say one thing, like right. pinpoint it to one thing. Wow. Mm -hmm. wow, what an incredible experience. I mean, yeah. not fun at the time, but wow. <laughs> Yeah, I was really curious. I was like, what is happening to me? Yeah. And it's, it's something that is not very well understood in uh, hospitals. You know, it's very similar to having a Kundalini awakening mm. when you have these moments of huge understanding and huge download, and then you feel in pure bliss and joy. I, I have some friends that had that, and they would drive without their seatbelt on because they're like, I'm safe. And if I mm. die, well, I go to that other amazing place. Like, wh what could, if it's worse staying than actually going. So, 
I'm not afraid. And to uh, people who don't understand that, it's completely crazy. And so I have a friend, she was sent to a psychiatric hospital because they were like, you have gone crazy. Oh, wow. And then after, after a few days, she came back and she was fine. But yeah. Hmm. Wow. Big wow. <laughs> <laughs> um, I want to ask about how, what are some practices, if I haven't already asked this, what are some practices you do? So we talked about Yoni Steam, um, to, to stay in the divine feminine. That's my so question. I have a, a very simple exercise that I that I do. Um, I have created actually a divine feminine meditation that you can listen to on my podcast, the Sacred oh. Root Podcast. Oh, I'll be doing that tonight. Yes. And so when you connect with your divine feminine, you then have the opportunity to feel her energy, see how she's dressed, how she's talking to you, and really consider that as highest version of yourself mm. and whenever you feel yourself slipping back into fear or limitations or wanting to fit in or hiding parts of yourself call in that divine feminine part of yourself that you've connected with mm -hmm. and ask her for guidance it can be done in two minutes if you go to the toilets and close your eyes you know you're at a restaurant having a difficult conversation with someone you can pretend you need to wash your hands mm. and just do that and the more you do that the easier it's going to become of just calling that part of yourself in and really becoming her because she's there love that i too am having now i am also in the cloud <laughs> You've put us in the cloud, Ali. <laughs> in the cloud. <laughs> it's my hypnotic voice. You do have it just is. the most calming. I can't. I'm like I can't wait to listen to your podcast because I just your voice is so hypnotizing in a beautiful way. <laughs> so your your podcast is called Sacred Root. Yeah, Sacred Roots. Sacred Roots, beautiful. Yeah. Oh, I and have I have a lot of uh, meditation. I have some uh, light language transmissions as well, mm. and some uh, some episodes that are really focused on women entrepreneurs as well, and how to get out of inaction and really step into your power, etc. Beautiful. Well, one question we also like to ask everyone that we have on is, what does being a goddess mean to you? <laughs> For me, being a goddess is really honoring and recognizing your beauty, but your beauty in all the sense that it could have, your inner beauty and your external beauty, and really not being afraid of showing that to the world, owning all your beauty. Mm. I love oh. that. So the you have this beautiful book. Yes. You have a beautiful podcast. Yes. Where else can our listeners find you and connect with you and work with you? Sure. So I have an Instagram account, Elie de Poisson. I'll send you the link. Uh, my book is on uh, Amazon, of course, Bars and Nobles. You can find it everywhere on the internet. Sacred Roots podcast. It's on Spotify, on Apple podcast. And if you're really interested in embodying your divine feminine, I'm launching a 21 day course the 3rd of January. Yeah. And it's going to be bringing all of my expertise together to really embody that super powerful and beautiful part of yourself. And um, yeah, I also do nine months group program for women entrepreneurs and one on one work. Amazing. Oh we will definitely have links to everything in the show notes so everyone can make sure and be following you and checking out your offerings. I'm excited to check out your podcast and get your book. I mm -hmm. think that's a must now. <laughs> definitely <laughs> want to learn more from you. Uh, thank you so, so much for taking this time out of your day. I feel like oh, I just took me. a master class on the divine feminine and I feel yeah. so empowered I know. Oh, um, to too. enter the new year now in, in a new light. So thank, thank you so you. much, Sadie and Juliet. This was super fun. And I'm sure we'll talk soon. We'll yes. Talk soon. Oh my gosh. So that was an incredible conversation with Ellie. We're both reeling, maybe a little bit speechless. How are you feeling, Julia? I am fully in the cloud. <laughs> I am in floating the on the cloud. I have not felt this relaxed mm -hmm. in a long time. And we just hung up with Ellie and I told her that 
I was yawning throughout the hour mm -hmm. and I'm not a yawner and I'm not bored and I'm not tired. She's like, no, 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 you're downloading this this new energy. These are energy updates. Yeah. And I said, yeah, I like I could yawn again right now. It's just a lot of information. You know, it's interesting because I told you this happened a few weekends ago where I had I kept having these moments where like I, I I described it as like that so raven moments. I felt like I was getting like tunnel vision and being pulled out of the real world for mm -hmm. a second and I, I would feel really faint. Mm. And the first time it happened, I started freaking out and I went, Archangel Michael, I don't like this. Uh, please be my oh. gatekeeper, like remove any energy. Like I don't like, like I was like, I was like freaking out because I was home alone. And as she was describing how she was feeling, I was like, that was kind of how I was feeling. I was feeling like I got really dizzy. I felt like almost like tunnel vision. I feel like I was being sucked out of earth and like things were like coming around me. But I, I, I was like, I'm not ready, mm. <laughs> ready for this. But the way she described that, I was like, I should probably invite that back. I mean, it happened a few more times less intense that weekend and then um, it kind of stopped. But it was just, when she was talking about her... Um, experience before she like slept for two days and got all that like upgrading or whatever I was like oh my god I was just feeling like that recently I'm so excited to allow myself to live in the feminine more mm -hmm. so excited <laughs> in fact I think that's gonna be one of my big 2022 goals yeah um because it it's just such a more yummy relaxing place to be. yummy it's a delicious place to be well it's interesting because i kind of set the intention because i felt like september october november i was in like hustle mode like mm. i was working i was sitting at my desk all day every day seven days a week and it was all good i created a lot and i had an amazing launch of activate your magic and it was all positive but then i had this download like the week before december started where i was like december i am I'm going to sit at my desk like maybe an hour a day. I'm going to be really intentional about not sitting there all day long, about just doing things for the sake of doing them and being more in my feminine. And wow, does it feel good. And there's been a little bit of like back and forth with me struggling with like, well, I need to I need to be doing stuff like I need to make mm -hmm. money like and I'm just like, no, no, no. My intuition is telling me if I just keep doing what I think I should be doing, which is relaxing and stop being in my should should be doing that money will come and I need to not worry about it but it's just interesting and it very validating to have this conversation being like okay it's safe for me to keep trying to do this <laughs> I know it this was one of my favorite mm -hmm. favorite episodes we've ever done it just felt so good it's one thing to hear somebody speak about a topic. It's another thing to feel that they truly embody it. She wasn't speaking about, she was like emitting a transmission. Yes. And it was integrating into our bodies. Yes. <laughs> it was like, and I'm curious how you f all feel after listening to that conversation, if you feel similarly of just like, oh my God, I like received that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I receive, I receive, I receive, I receive. I receive. I, when she first started talking, I was getting like chills up and down my body the whole time and it slowly got like less and less until like I felt like mm. completely high and relaxed and I was just like, Juliet's carrying this one. <laughs> we take turns. <laughs> but by the end, we were both like, da -da -da, we don't know, know how to talk to you. I know. Just keep saying words. I we know. love you. <laughs> I would say something, something. And that's my question. <laughs> and um, yeah, I don't got any more than that. Um, oh I gosh. especially lo loved I have to get books on Mary Magdalene I mm -hmm. I know Mary Magdalene briefly growing up Catholic and just knowing that she was a part of Jesus' life but I think it's interesting that we weren't taught very much about her because she's a strong powerful intuitive witch um, I, and <laughs> the Catholics didn't want us to know about that they were like no Jesus <laughs> is the way not Mary Magdalene I uh, only ever heard about her and granted I, I was not taught Christian topics growing up but right. I mean we do celebrate Christmas but for the fun of it um, Mary anyways, Magdalene's not part of the birth of Jesus either yeah, so it just didn't come up <laughs> I, I only ever heard kind of not so positive things about her right but go Go figure. Go figure. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm excited. to. I'm like, I got to go buy Ellie's book. I got to go buy books about Mary Magdalene and learn mm -hmm. about the bitch wound, the witch wound, and the whore wound. That was so fascinating. Mm -hmm. I definitely 
knew about those things and specifically the witch wound, but I hadn't heard them sort of so like clearly talked about, if that makes sense. I was like, oh yeah, like the whore wound definitely can relate to that. You know, it can relate to yeah. all those wounds, but just have them laid out and it just be like, these are from Mary Magdalene in this way. I mean, wow. I think we have to channel Mary Magdalene as a guest on Goddess Hangs. I really think it would be a great idea to do an episode. <laughs> I'm so sorry to my father who edits these. Where we do a... <laughs> he edited the basic witch episodes and, he, and I said, what do you think? He's like, someone's going to love it. <laughs> he was just, sorry, Greg. Oh, we love you. Thank you. Um, we have to do a Yoni steam. Oh, yeah. And report back. I have Googled this. And there's mixed messages. Some people say it changes your life. Some people say it messes with the, the flora pH, and the fauna. The balance. The, the bal- I said the balance. The balance. The balance. <laughs> I, I, uh, I was like, I'm, I'm not going to itch. <laughs> so, I'm willing to give it a try. And if it's not for me, you know. You know what? I will give it a try. I already for have ex- lavender. I already have rose petals. Let's do it for exactly five minutes. Yeah. Which is about as long as I can also stay in a jacuzzi (laughs) before the flora and the fauna go askew. Askew. (laughs) I don't want to throw that pH balance askew. We worked hard to get here. You know, I I just, on the topic of vaginas for... (laughs) All of us here who have vaginas, um, I which is a full, which is like having a pet <laughs> or like a part-time job. Well, I was just thinking, I think about this all the time. Actually, I'm like, <laughs> I'm so glad I have a vagina because I can't imagine having that dangly stuff just <laughs> around. Like whenever, like whenever, like Craig's walking around naked, I'm just like. Like, I love that thing and all, but, like, I'm so glad I don't have one. Like, it's just weird. So much repositioning involved. I, yeah, I'm just like, uh, vaginas come with their own problems, you know, and, and issues, and, and you have to take care of them, and they bleed for a lot of us and everything. But, like, I'll take my vagina, my ble- bleeding vagina any day of the week. I love having a vagina. It's, it's a delight. But, oh, what I was going to say is... <laughs> Where are we going with this? What I was going to say is... I used to try all of these different like natural like vagina washes to balance your pH and um, oh isn't that like a no no and it doesn't the, you know what helped honestly I think masturbating a lot because because <laughs> you're you're getting wet and it's like cleansing <laughs> I swear to God when I started mad- masturbating more I like my vagina was happier and I stopped using everything and I just you know you know, I, I get also, I, I wash her a little in the shower and everything, but I feel like <laughs> that was the ticket because you're just moving more. You know, you're like helping along the self cleansing properties of the vagina. <laughs> I can also recommend using and no, not antibacterial soap. Yeah, just you use you want dove bacteria. sensitive skin. Mm, mm-hmm. That's what I use. Yeah, yeah, and I just that, have a. I don't know. Yeah, because when you use antibacterial soap, you Kills good literally bacteria. kill all the good bacteria, and then you're like, why am I uncomfortable? Yeah, so hot tip. Don't use pH balancing products and masturbate. Yes. <laughs> and that, you know, double whammy, because you'll also be more become more in tune with your divine feminine and your sexual desires, and then you'll make more money. And then you'll make more money, and we're going to sit on a, a steaming pot of roses. Yep. And 2022 is all about our vaginas making us money. <laughs> that needs to be a shirt. A pussy with like the dollar signs as the S. <laughs> yes. We got to do an episode about pussy power. I feel like we've been talking more about it lately and it, makes I know. Me, it brings me a lot of joy. I know. I've I've come out of my shell a little yeah. bit. I mean, it's it's because you're not a hundred percent. Your dad's the producer, so to be fair, I know my dad doesn't listen to this. I hope he doesn't. Maybe he does, and I should warn him because he's not gonna like some of these episodes. He's very private, and I am not. <laughs> no, you don't say. Huh. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> you know, Sadie's extremely transparent. I'm I'm like. You know the the picture of the window they show before you use Windex on it. <laughs> That's me. And I'm I'm She's after the after. Windex. 
<laughs> that the birds just run right into. <laughs> oh, man. Those are good commercials with those birds. I know. They're back. I know. Well, we have a few things that we want to <laughs> remind you all about. A reminder. Goddess Hangs is brought to you by Intuitive Magic Oracle Deck. Have you seen this Oracle Deck? Boy, are you missing out if you haven't. Intuitive Magic Oracle is perfect for the goddess in your life or yourself who has a lot of questions and is having trouble tapping into your intuition. It's also great for the goddess who wants a deck and is just overwhelmed in these stores. Do I want this one with the fairies, the mermaids, the squirrels? What do I want? What you want is the Intuitive Magic Oracle deck. There's the Otter of Laughter, the Unicorn of Divine Purpose, and the Tiger of Com- Divine the t- the Confidence. The Tiger of Divine Confidence? You this, can have it all. This deck literally has it all. <laughs> so get yours today. Link in the show notes, Intuitive Magic Oracle. <gasps> hey, hey, Frankie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember my name? No. No, it was Bobby. Oh, hey, Bobby. Have you joined the Patreon? What is my accent? I can't do one. Have you joined the Patreon? (laughs) (laughs) I can't do accents. Oh, you talking about that God is saying Patreon? I forgot. I can't grab the mic. Stop touching it. (laughs) It's odd. (laughs) Oh, you you talking about that God is saying Patreon everybody else be talking about all the time? It's $5 a month. And for just five dollars a month, I heard you get about my accent keeps changing too. I heard you get about fifty new best friends. I'm leaning into it. That's right. (laughs) (laughs) And not only that, but you get to be part of our exclusive retreat planning. The goddess getaway. Twenty twenty two. Twenty twenty two. We are planning the first ever Goddess Getaway retreat. Uh, We have already been sending out photos. We have a cabin in the woods picked out. That's such a vibe. Um, We have already invited our Patreon members. It's a Patreon exclusive offer Mm -hmm. because it's... It's something that we just want everyone to be able to, like, build this connection up prior to, like, being there together. And I think that's what makes it so extra special. Uh, Our Goddess Patreon BFF chat, I mean, we really do cover it all. We talk about... Oh, my gosh. Our babies, our pets, our sexuality, Mm -hmm. our witchcraft, Mm -hmm. our favorite memes, Yep. our vulnerabilities uh our charcuterie boards char char charcuterie board (laughs) (laughs) our holiday plans um everything it's it's truly like when we you know our branding is all about creating that best friend relationship with you our listeners Mm -hmm. and this is really a manifestation i'm getting chilled it's like a manifestation of it coming to life it's so so special and we would love to have you be a part of it we have the five dollar tier where you get to be a part of about 11 different group chats we have them in themes so it's easier to keep up um we have the coven tier which is 22 dollars a month so you get the group chat and that plus a monthly coven meeting with us um where we work spells together we meditate together we just have beautiful beautiful connections and breakthroughs it's been so powerful so far so we would love to see you Mm -hmm. frankie and bobby here would love to see inside the goddess bff patreon group chat join the patreon (laughs) if you're like me you don't like paying for things on a subscription plan get over it you'll love it it. (laughs) get over it you'll love it you'll love it you'll You'll love love it. it And we also have our Outcharmed Jewelry <gasps> Collaboration. This is the jewelry to die for. To die for. It's to die for. Don't you want to sparkle in the new year? Well, get your Outcharmed uh, Sadie the Witch necklace, Juliet the Goddess necklace, Ooh. BFF charm bracelet, and magic charm ring. Do you want magic at your fingertips? Well, boy, do we have the ring for you. 
I'm wearing all the pieces right now and I cannot tell you, I feel so pretty when I wear them. I feel so magical. I feel so much like myself when I don't have these pieces on. I feel like something's missing. I feel I'm going to be honest. I feel connected to all of my BFFs. I know. And knowing that so many of you have already um, invested in this beautiful jewelry, even if it's just one piece that calls to you, of course, we love the whole collection. But just knowing that we're matching is so fun. It, it makes, makes us feel so happy. Like Sadie said, even more connected. We also have really fun merch. We have a goddess hat, <gasps> a witch hat um, that are so cute. We also have a Patreon exclusive tote bag. And um, we always have our goddess handbook available. There's so much, so many ways to connect with us. And, um, you know, we're just excited <laughs> that you're here. So if you want to just keep <laughs> listening and you're like, ah, to that other stuff. Thank you for being here. We're so happy you're here. <laughs> and we just want to be closer with you in every way. Please match with us and text us all day long. Please. That's all we ask. We want <laughs> more of you. <laughs> um, so I think that wraps up our episode. Shout out to beautiful Ellie for gracing us with her divine feminine presence and teaching us so much and we'll oh follow <gasps> us on instagram at goddess hangs i'm at i am sandy olson i'm at juliet dot piper and have an amazing new year's eve new year. happy new year almost 2022 <laughs> two, 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 two. gonna be a great year it is all right bye goddesses bye. Bye.